as I remember in the abstract, there was, uh, uh, there was verbiage suggesting that uh, with these new data from both the, I think it was called Checkmate 204 and then the Australian study that Georgina presented, which was called the ABC study, that maybe we could do without stereotactic radiosurgery. Do you do without stereotactic in patients who get epinevo with brain meds? So we, we don't have very much experience in combining, you know, the two immunotherapeutic agents plus stereotactic surgery. We have more experience in using anti-PD-1 alone plus stereotactic surgery. That's uh, what I need to declare here, but it could make sense. We have at least some animal models, one publication uh, also in humans, which indicate that there uh, might be synergism and additive effects if you combine radiotherapy, but you know, it depends. I, I was really uh, impressed by EP plus NEVO at ASCO. That's the best data I have seen, not uh, because uh, the response rate is very high and surprisingly high and the response rate in the brain and outside of the brain is exactly the same but because the duration of the responses was so pretty and there was data on tyrosine kinase inhibitors where we expected to see very high rates and they showed also you know good responses in the brain good extra training responses but it appeared that the duration of response is shorter. So the quality of the responses is eventually higher and the number of CRs was surprisingly high in a range of 20% for EP plus NEVO. And therefore, I think, you know, in these sort of patients, if the patient can tolerate the toxicity and the patient got a good informed consent, you know, I would say that this is a treatment of choice. Uh, I, I would like to say something because I, th I, when you ask this question, this is really a point that makes me a little bit uncomfortable because we know, as you say, that with radio surgery, we get rid of uh, the metastasis. I mean, rapidly, it works well. And uh, I think we absolutely have to evaluate this combination, which I agree the, the results are impressive, but with radio surgery, maybe upfront or with radio surgery, if it doesn't work right away. And it's difficult not to propose to a patient who has three brain meds accessible to radiosurgery that you are sure if there is no other meds, for example, you can treat these three metastases with radiosurgery. Of course, you don't. The problem is not solved, definitely. But you can at least have an immediate good effect. And I think this, um, this procedure has to be incorporated in our clinical trials. So, Reinhard, do you forego stereotactic radiosurgery in, say, a metastatic newly diagnosed patient with multiple small metastases, treat him with ipinevo, and then wait? Yeah, or would you treat him with radiosurgery? So we are in a constant discussion with our radio-oncologists, and there are two developments based on the ASCO abstract. So first, we use now ipinevo combinations in patients that have multiple brain meds, and then we have a close look to the, to the distribution and the size. If uh, a lesion has a size over five millimeters, these get stereotactic, and our uh, radio-oncologists now agree to do so even if other brain meds are around. So we had a problem with this because uh, they really insisted to do whole brain irradiations, and this was, then actually we get rid of this now yeah. because they also have some confidence that the systemic therapy works and if it's working incompletely, so if we con can control most of the metastases but a few are regrowing, then we use additional stereotactic irradiation. And I think with this we have really improved uh, uh, the care of this uh, advanced patients and we avoid significant toxicity because some of them will make it in long term disease stabilization and maybe even cure, we don't mm. know. Mm. So we have to be very careful with, with long-term toxicity and, and uh, interventions that damage uh, cognitive functions. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. And you know, one of the interesting things about radio surgery is that it does cause an inflammatory tumor microenvironment, which might, yeah. in my view, add to the efficacy, or although it could add to the toxicity of IPI and NEVO, but what about another way to induce inflammation in the tumor and turn a cold tumor into a hot one, and that's TVEC, these, one of these direct uh, uh, herpes virus injections. Uh, Axel, do you have much experience with this? Oh, we used it in a number of patients inside and outside of clinical trials in Germany. It's available, it's approved and reimbursed from the very first day. That's a beauty in Germany. Once a drug is approved, it's available on the same day. 
So which means uh, we have early experience and, uh, and I, have, I have seen nice responses in the early clinical trials. And uh, the Germans were not involved in the very first trial, which was called Optim trial, to bring the drug to the market. But you know, um, we were involved in ipilimumab plus minus TVEC, and I have two patients still in complete response with numerous lesions and uh, even without the drug. So the drug was given for just uh, uh, three months, and in another case it was given for, for nine months, and we caused a complete response, which is long-lasting. Yes, but you had EP. We had EP in these patients. For those who didn't have EP, we are seeing responses, and we are seeing also responses in lesions which have not been injected. So you were part of the trial that Jason Chesney presented, yeah, I guess, Yeah, that's at accepted now for Journal of Clinical Oncology, and, uh, and it will be published very soon. And uh, it's doubling the response rate, it's doubling PFS, you know, it's impressive data, I would say. And therefore, you know, there is some, some sort of action. And the, the, the most important clinical trial is certainly now the Pembrolizumab plus minus TVEC yes. trial, which is still recruiting, halfway is done right now. And, you know, and I think this is a good trial, but in the routine, we cannot use it. Right. It's simply so, because the, the, the combination is not approved and we are very restrictive with combinational use once these combinations are not approved. But I think everybody does look forward to the results of Pembro plus TVEC versus Pembro alone.